I'm Jana Slutskaya, and today we are at one of my favorite places, the North Carolina Museum of Art, located in Raleigh, North Carolina. We welcome you to explore the museum's magnificent park and enjoy some of the sights and sounds of this beautiful place. Then, as part of our exclusive people behind the museum, we meet the museum director of education, Michelle Harrell, as she tells us about her personal journey and her special relationship with the museum. And finally, we get a sneak peek at the museum's latest exhibition, The Golden Mummies of Egypt. And now, let's talk art. Every day, hundreds of people visit the Anne and Jim Goodnight Museum Park, which is located just a few miles away from downtown Raleigh. This vast 164-acre campus offers a unique opportunity for experiencing art and nature. Through enjoying walking trails, outdoor sculptures, and lush green lawns for picnicking with a closeness to fascinating art galleries at the North Carolina Museum of Art. Anyone who loves an active lifestyle and enjoys the outdoors can find something exciting and interesting to do at this wonderful park. bench but it's lovely to see everybody sitting out and listening to the chamber yes. music and awesome that those are middle school students that are playing there and it's very inspiring and it's a beautiful day it's, it's beautiful. a beautiful day so you're doing the rings yeah. and the laying statue yeah so usually I'm, I'm part of the botanical oh, illustration um, oh yeah certificate program at the North Carolina ah, Botanical Garden very nice so landscapes are not usually my thing but I just decided I had to get my sketchbook out that's nice I love it hey, so try, I'm trying to try to get these musicians Let's see if I can pull off some people they have instruction booklets for painting people, but I haven't read them yet. <laughs> Maybe I should. But this is lovely. Yeah, I took some plein air from a gal from Charleston, and we went to southern France before the pandemic in fall of 2019. So this has been what, a year and a half. <laughs> and you're back here. Yeah. And so this is, this is just great. Yes. This is great. I love the, the form there. That was that was inspiring.
So we just moved here from, from Germany in, in December, which made it in, uh, during the pandemic uh, with like one year delay or so. So and basically this is the first spot we are going um, since we are able to go out, you know. So um, this is great and uh, we heard a lot of good things about the park and it's obviously it's very nice. We, we didn't see too much yet, as I said, uh -huh. but it's uh, very nice, very beautiful and uh, also the art we see here around so far, um, we like it quite, quite a lot. So very happy nice. to see more of it. Do you have like a favorite spot in the park? Well, you know, one of my favorite areas that I walk in, I take the long route and I walk over across the bridge. I like that area, it's a little secluded, and then you can get something to eat, you know, at Whole Foods, and then turn around and come back. But uh, I take the back trail because I get a chance, the opportunity to really enjoy some of the natural art that's here. And I just appreciate this museum, it's wonderful. Yes. More than anything, we're out in nature, and it's beautiful, and you can catch some music, and catch some good vibes. So this is a great place to be. It's beautiful. I know. <laughs> yeah, we like the music in the park. Um, all the people around, so you can tell everybody's enjoying it. There's little groups of people that sit in picnics. Say hi, Athena. Yeah. What a baby. Like an Athena, just yeah. about, right? Hi. Well, I remember when the kids were very young, uh, they used to have a Father's Day concert out here. It was before the amphitheater, but they still had the venue, and we would come out here and have a picnic, and it was just absolutely gorgeous and fun, and the kids we would, would crawl roll down on, the hills. Roll down the hills and crawl on rocks, and we'd have yeah. a picnic dinner, and it was really, really fun. We've been to so concerts fun. out here in the summer, movies in the summer uh, and walks, all sorts of things. We, we just love it. And obviously we've been to the art museum many times. Uh, I think her first exhibition was Rodan, I don't know, 20 years ago. And, uh, <laughs> well, she's uh, still there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what would you say is your favorite spot in the park? The landscaping, it's just relaxing. It is, it really is. Yeah, and it's good for Henry because he gets to meet all the other dogs. I know, right? It's yeah. like a dog paradise. There's so many puppies out there, right? It is. It is. <laughs> you guys like the park? Yes, I love the park. I come here all the time and hike around, and I love seeing the big sculptures. And it's really beautiful. The nature is really beautiful over here. Do you go to the museum? Yeah, well. I love the museum. I haven't been in a while, so uh -huh. we're gonna go in there and check out what's new. Very nice. They have a mummy exhibition right now. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. Really yeah, cool. I'll definitely cool. check like, that out. Spooky. Yeah, I'm excited. No, I'm this is my first time here, so yeah? I'm actually pretty excited. From what I've seen so far, probably the two minutes that I've been here, but so far so good, right? Did you see the, the, like, the live music, the concert? Yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Enjoying live classical music, exploring outdoor art, and chatting with a few visitors, we had a chance to talk to museum park ranger Humphrey Truitt. Hi Humphrey, I'm so glad that you were able to meet us today um, and uh, chat. Hey, can you tell us uh, what is your role here at the museum park? Yes, well, thank you for having me uh, first and foremost, but my role here is as a, as a law enforcement officer, I'm assigned as a park ranger here at the park and we protect and serve the public here. Um, within the museums, we protect the property, the artifacts, uh, the artwork, and out here in the park, it's 164 acres total. So how many people does it take to run uh, security and uh, care of such a vast land? 
Sure, so we have a great team here at the museum. So everyone works together. Um, we have volunteers, uh, we have docents, we have security staff, wow. we have gallery, gallery guard staff. So, you know, we come together and, and we make it work in terms of utilizing our resources uh, to, to develop the objectives uh, within the park as well as the uh, museum. How many people do you think are visiting now, like on the, like, let's say, on a regular basis? Do you think there's more people coming now to enjoy the park? Absolutely. We definitely have seen an increase in the people that, that, that has come. They feel more comfortable right. coming out to the park. Um, at this point, so they're here. Uh, as you see, this is a very nice day, so you Beautiful, see people are, are enjoying the park and walking and things of that nature. So there are various uh, areas in the park where there's counters. So the counters count people in the park. So any given weekend, it can be thousands of people. Oh here. my goodness, yes. that's a big number. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and that doesn't surprise me, knowing how and seeing how beautiful it is. Soon we're gonna be we're gonna open up um, Art and Bloom. That's one of our oh, yes. largest um, events of the year. To it brings thousands of people in, and uh, that's starting uh, soon. We're planning for that now. Um, Golden Mummies is an exhibit that's going to be a large attraction for people. So even though those are kind of geared in, inside the museums. Right. The, the people are drawn to the outside, to the park as well, to enjoy that. Right, right. To enjoy that, uh, the festivities out in the park. That's wonderful. I love, I love that uh, relation between nature and art. Mm -hmm. I love that experience. Well, thank you so much. Thank it's a beautiful you so much. day. We'll Absolutely. be back soon. Thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye bye. Michelle, thank you so much for having us today and finding time to meet us. Oh, thank you, Yanni. It's a pleasure to talk with you. Michelle, can you tell us, please, uh, what is your role at the Museum of Art? Well, as Director of Education, I le lead an amazing team of educators who are responsible from, um, for everything from gallery interpretation, so when there's a video or a tablet or something, a, an app in the gallery um, or in the park, to all the way to school teacher programs, the tour experiences, camps, um, digital and online learning, our online courses, um, all of those things come underneath our team. So it's an exciting um, series of programs. I never, ever get bored. Wow, <laughs> Always so, learning something. You have such a large expertise. Mm. So how many people are all together, do you think, running this place? Make it, making it what it is today? A uh, great question because so many people have um, no idea of the work that it takes to yes. operate a museum. So you have hundreds of people that are on the operational level from security and housekeeping um, to conservation and treatment of the works of art. Um, the registrar keeping up with um, the traffic of loans that are coming in, loans from our museum going out to other museums, art handlers. So um, there are literally hundreds of people that work at North Carolina Museum of Art. But like I just said, it runs on volunteer power. Without our volunteers to be able to engage the public in park tours and park cleanup and all of the different things, our, our museum would not be as successful and able to meet our mission as we can. That's wonderful, I love it. Okay. Michelle, I know you're an artist yourself, and you're an amazing artist. Oh, thank you. How did, how did you become an artist? And how, from artist, you become uh, the director of learning and educational programs at the Museum of Art? How, how, how that happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's funny because I grew up in a family of makers. You know, my yeah. grandmothers were quilters, my dad is, you know, has an amazing wood shop. Um, but working in a museum was not a career that I understood what that even meant. So it's mm. great that you're having this conversation that you're increasing awareness for other people. Yes. Um, so I received my Bachelor's of Fine Art in Painting mm. and Art Education at East Carolina University Ooh. and went on to pursue my Master's and taught in the classroom, middle and high school art, technology, and a few other things wow. for about 13 years. 
prior to coming to the museum when there was an opportunity to begin a teen and college program and our, our online course program. So um, that was an amazing opportunity. I sometimes miss the classroom, but there are so many opportunities to teach in a museum setting that um, is always engaging. I, constantly am, am trying out new strategies and learning um, and supporting other teachers. So it's, it's very exciting. Michelle, did you just recently receive the National Museum Educator Yes, I did. Of the Year <laughs> Award? Yes, uh, the National um, Art Education Association um, is recognizing um, my work. It's a it's an outstanding honor yeah. that I um, feel reflects on the team that I serve, that I manage, um, and the work that they do. So I'm very proud to, to wow. be um, well, chosen my applause. for that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, and tell me more about your art. Like, what do you create as an artist? I primarily work in landscape. Uh -huh. um, I also, as a, as a mom who's balancing full-time work and full-time, you know, soccer practice and everything right. else. I also um, have relied on my visual journal, which yes. is sort of like a sketchbook, but much more of a mixed media work that I've been doing for probably about 15 years. So I work in layers. I love to explore the layered history of places uh -huh. and people, collage, drawing, paint. I'm also drawn to color. Yeah. and not only trying to capture the atmospheric effects of light, but my emotional connections to a place. So um, it's, and when you work in a place as inspiring as the North Carolina Museum of Art, yeah. it's always shifting and changing from all the different inspirations. There are a number of people here, everyone from, um, from art handlers to educators mm -hmm. that work in some art form. And I think that it brings a lot to the work that we do here at the museum, but we also bring this work yes. into our own personal practice. So do you have any uh, art that inspires you the most here at the museum? That's something you go to and you say, that is, fulfills me greatly. Absolutely. I definitely have some old friends that I love to visit every time I do a walk through in the museum. Um, but when I'm asked what my favorites are, it's yes. hard to say one favorite because that's always shifting. Right. You know, whatever movie I watched over the weekend or conversation I had with a friend influences the way that I see a work of art that I might have known for like years and years, but I mm -hmm. noticed something different. Or the pairings. You know, we were talking about how yes. pairings works of art bring a new perspective that now that I'm looking at a 17th century painting next to a contemporary work of art. <laughs> so you're in the, you are an artist, you're an educator, you are director of education and learning, <laughs> and you're a mom. So how can you combine all this together? Uh, a, a, a lot of support, <laughs> um, both within work and family and everything else. And it's been a wonderful thing to have my own kids to grow up within the museum. You know, sometimes I remember when I first started working here, my youngest son taking naps underneath my desk and, you know, <laughs> so going, growing up going to camps and they just by default of being, you know, my children, they would volunteer at festivals that I was help working. And just the experiences that they've had because of those opportunities uh -huh. have been, um, have shaped them. And Wonderful. also, it's been another way to experience what I do with them. I have memories of bringing my oldest son here when he was little, and he mm -hmm. loved to dance on the amphitheater stage. Oh, great. He's Love probably going to hate me telling that story. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, he has memories of all of that. So the park has been a special uh -huh. place for us. And we come um, a great deal on the weekend to just ride bikes walk in the park and explore that side of the museum. So I think that that was probably their first experience once they had the toe in the water of that. Um, they also love to spend time in the galleries. Every time that um, they're both here, they have favorite works of art that they like to explore. So it looks like the Museum of Art is for everyone, for children, for adults. So how are the people with special needs? Um, can they enjoy the museum? Oh, 
We hope so, absolutely. Um, that is part of our mission, is that it is the people's collection that we're sharing with the people of North Carolina. So accessibility is mm -hmm. a priority for our museum. Any hearing loss, um, any visual impairments, any physical limitations, um, that regardless of those, if we can design at the margins with those as our top priority, then that improves the experience for everyone. So um, absolutely, that is a high priority for North Carolina Museum of Art. I love it. So do you think people need to know a lot about art to appreciate it? What do you think? That's a great question because two parts of that question as far as is, is it necessary to re already have knowledge mm -hmm. about art to be able to come and experience a museum, but also the word appreciate is something that is so loaded. Art is a catalyst for exploring the world and life. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you may have experiences that might be works of art that you don't necessarily um, appreciate or like because they question your views, they question mm -hmm. your perspectives or a history that you associated because now you're able to understand this in a creative way from a particular artist sharing their particular life experiences. But absolutely no, I think that there should not be any level of required prerequisite for you to be able to come and experience art, experience a museum, but the more you know, absolutely, the more you know, the more you appreciate and you gain from those experiences. So one of the mm -hmm. wonderful things that our marketing team has done to capture our approach to um, all the different dimensions that we have here at the museum is this wonderful tagline, art, nature, people. And we've been thinking about how the intersections of our work in the park, our work in the galleries, as well as engaging with the visitor directly and making it a place where everyone can feel a sense of belonging. Um, so that is definitely something that is is on our minds constantly as a museum and the work that we do in engaging the public. Thank you so much for finding time again and I'll be back here soon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. The Golden Mummies exhibition, um, I think, is quite wonderful because it brings to the museum something we do not have in our collection, and that is mummies. We do not have human mummies here at the NCMA, but you have eight inside the exhibition. And I think that's very exciting um, because it's not something you see typically. Um, and ever since I started working at the museum 15 years ago, people have been asking for mummies. When are you going to have mummies on exhibition? Uh, will you ever have um, something related to mummies? And well, finally, we do. So that's very exciting. This, the, the thing I really like about the exhibition is that it's actually more than just mummies. Uh, we talk about multiculturalism. We talk about funerary uh, beliefs um, in Egypt at the time when Egypt was ruled by the Greeks and the Romans. Um, so. There's a little bit more than just having mummies. We're talking about culture, we're talking about religious beliefs, we're talking about um, how art um, change, especially in how people represent themselves. So I, I think that's very exciting about this exhibition. So with uh, any kind of any exhibition, there's always multiple departments that work on getting the exhibition here, installing it here. Uh, it's the same thing with um, a traveling exhibition. Um, this one is coming from Manchester Museum in the UK, and um, it was previously in Buffalo, uh, New York, at the Science Museum. So it just had to travel from New York to North Carolina. So this involves uh, registrars who will make arrangements for things to be shipped um, mm -hmm. to the museum. Once things are at the museum, 
then you have to work with the conservation um, team who mm -hmm. will, when we're unpacking the objects, make sure that nothing happened um, in transport. And then you also work with the art handling team to install the objects in the exhibition. My name is Kat Harding and I am the Assistant Director of Communication and Marketing at the North Carolina Museum of Art. And one of the fun things that my team and I do is help get the word out about our events and exhibitions, all of our new art acquisitions into the community. Um, so I really think of my team as a funnel that everything at the museum comes through. So even things like the store and the restaurant, everything my team gets to touch and it just makes it I get the best view of what's happening at the Art Museum. Okay, so this is a really fun and great example of some of the stuff that the marketing team does. So this was a package for press and influencers coming to see Golden Mummies of Egypt. So we have our rat card, and this was also designed with our graphic design team, proofed by our editing team. You know, it's just a huge collaborative group effort that I really like working on. And then of course, approved by our curator of the exhibition. Speaking of chocolate, the bar, so this is from Videri and has our packaging on it and it's sold in the store so again we're bringing the community into the museum in a new way. So this is a perfect example of all of the marketing and communications coming together with the rest of the folks at the museum, the store, the restaurant, local artists, it's really one of my favorite things to put together. So all the kids who like um, ancient Egyptian culture should all bring their mummies and their daddies to see the mummies.